afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and dear uh, friends. My name is Eric Fouts, and I'm the director of the new UNESCO New Delhi office, which covers uh, India, but also uh, Sri Lanka, uh, Bhutan, uh, the Maldives, uh, and uh, we also have uh, colleagues based in uh, Bangladesh and Nepal who work closely with us. How does it sound okay? Yeah? You can hear me okay? Yeah? yeah? All right, so uh, together with our partners from TIS, uh, uh, I would like to uh, welcome you uh, for the state launch of the third edition of our State of the Education Report for India, which, as you all know, focuses on the theme of teachers, a very important and wide uh, theme. With uh, the recently, well, not so recently, but we, I think we all still say that, uh, launched a 2020 national policy on education, and of course the COVID-19 uh, pandemic forming a, a crucial context. Uh, this uh, report aims to highlight uh, progress and achievements uh, made in uh, India, as well of course as the continuing challenges faced by the country. What we have tried to do in this uh, report is to in particular showcase promising practices and outline possible directions for future growth. I think you already uh, hear in what I'm saying that we are only offering suggestions. Of course, uh, at the national level, it's first and foremost uh, for the government of India to take uh, the appropriate decisions. But there's a lot of stakeholders in the field of uh, education. And we try to, of course, uh, address uh, this uh, particular aspect also in the report. At uh, the outset, I really want to say that uh, I am delighted to be uh, back here uh, in Mumbai. Uh, together with the, uh, all of our friends from the Tata Institute of uh, Social Sciences. There's a lot of effort uh, that uh, Professor Padma and her team at TIS have put in, into developing this uh, report. So we're very happy that we have a chance to be together with, uh, with you, involving a lot of the stakeholders, people who work uh, at TIS and with TIS. This is a, uh, you are in charge of a very uh, prestigious and uh, respected institution, so we were very happy to pair up with you for the preparation of this report. And we're also going to release today, because that has not been shared before, the Marathi version of the report uh, summary. We hope that it will help also in uh, uh, making the uh, findings of the report more generally available. You may know that we actually launched this report uh, a few months ago on the occasion of World Teachers Day. It uh, felt like the most appropriate moment to uh, launch this uh, report uh, at the time when there was uh, a global call for action uh, where governments and the international community uh, at large were called upon to uh, focus on uh, teachers and the challenges uh, facing their profession and uh, to share uh, effective and promising policy responses. Obviously, this came at a time when we were uh, even more than now still in the in the COVID-19 uh, phase. We are barely uh, emerging uh, from, from it. Uh, and that's what our State of the Education Report tried to uh, address. Uh, we have uh, in our report included 10 recommendations that you will discover uh, in a moment. They are simplified in a way, but they're aimed to provide some main policy uh, directions. In, as we start our program uh, this afternoon, uh, of course, I have a thought first and foremost, for all the teachers of India who have been so mobilized during the last two years, despite all of the difficulties. Uh, when we prepared this uh, report, our team met, of course, with many of them. And let's hear what they had to say about their experiences of being a teacher in India. Teaching methods, scope, and strategies go 
अपने स्टूडेंट अपने स्टूडेंट तक पहुंचाएं और अपने ज्ञान कौशल के द्वारा उन्हें उत्तरोत्तर प्रगति के मार्ग पर अग्रसर कर सके एक बढ़िया गुरुजी जी मुझे जो आप कभी भी हिम्मत ना So this is obviously just a, a snippet from a few uh, teachers. As I said, we met many in the preparation of this uh, report. But the idea was to bring attention to all of the teachers who were very much on the front lines during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. As you all know, and we were just uh, uh, discussing this uh, with Professor Shani Barat just a few minutes ago, uh, they were they had to use a lot of online tools, uh, in particular to make sure that uh, the students could continue uh, to work and to make education accessible, but also fun, creative, and engaging uh, for all the learners. Dealing with a global uh, pandemic has not been easy for any teacher, and quite clearly, our report uh, this year on teacher was very much influenced by uh, the situation that we had known for the past two years. Uh, but we have heard many instances, many uh, uh, stories where teachers have been very innovative and uh, proactive in ensuring that there's no hindrance in the uh, cognitive development of their students. The key role played by teachers in these difficult circumstances is really what this report is all about. Therefore, the title of the report that you have seen when you came in, in case you uh, did not know about it, no teacher, no class, simply because uh, when there is no teacher, there can be no class, and therefore, no learning and no education. So let's look a little bit more in the detail and some, some of the statistics that are contained in the, in the report. And we'll start with very basic one. According to the most recent data, we know that there are approximately 9.7 million teachers uh, employed across 1.5 million primary and secondary schools in India. These are statistics from the 2019-2020 uh, school year. This makes India one of the countries with one of the largest teaching workforces in the world, maybe even the largest uh, workforce. What this uh, data also shows us is that the profession overall is uh, gender balanced, with women accounting for about 50% of the teaching workforce. But we see also that there are significant interstate and urban rural variations. Uh, we know also that 67% of uh, teachers in urban areas are women, as compared to 43% of rural teachers. This is where we start to see uh, interesting um, differences that needs to, need to be looked at. As you can see on the screen, there is gender imbalance but between different types of teachers as well. Early childhood education, special education, and private unaided schools are highly feminized. Uh, in contrast, there are much less women teachers in vocational education, with less than a third of uh, them represented, about 32%. Uh, this uh, has shown that there's a, a real need to uh, support women teachers in these specific sectors and ensure that they are given equal opportunities. Uh, you will have a lot more information, obviously, uh, in the report. But I would certainly like to recall that gender equality is uh, one of UNESCO, uh, uh, UNESCO's global priority uh, areas. Uh, and uh, this is something that I'm sure you know is very important for all UN agencies. And I really want to uh, salute and thank our colleagues from UNICEF for being with us uh, today. So we have really uh, tried to look in this report uh, at the particular situation through, uh, from a gender lens. Uh, and uh, the report does indicate, uh, for instance, that while teaching is a first choice for women as well as for youth, they often make this choice to better balance their work and their family responsibilities. So it's a particular type of choice, if I may phrase it that way. For this reason, they're also less willing to opt for other responsibilities, like, for example, in school management. 
that also is one of the areas that we looked at in the report. And it, of course, raises uh, some gender equality issues uh, in the educational uh, workforce. Moving from um, uh, to, to national strategies, uh, I really want to mention, I, I mentioned it in the beginning, that in India, the government has taken many, many important steps to make uh, reforms in education. And obviously, the national education uh, policy from 2020, uh, which, was, uh, which has now been, been rolled out, uh, outlines India's new uh, vision of its education uh, system. And we try in our report to very much showcase all of this uh, progress. Our report tries to be constructive. That's one of the uh, words that I always use together with, the, with our team. And you know that the national education policy proposes uh, several changes, a lot of changes actually, to be made in the, in the current uh, system aimed at ensuring the provision of quality teachers and quality uh, teaching in order to ensure quality education for all. I think uh, you're all uh, familiar with, in particular, Sustainable Development Goals. I will talk about it a little bit uh, later. But specifically with reference to teaching, the NEP acknowledges teachers as the heart of the learning process and stresses the importance of their recruitment uh, continuous professional development, work environment, and also the service conditions. So again, I don't want to be misunderstood. I understand that there may be members of the media also uh, here uh, with us. Uh, we are definitely in our report underlining all of these positive aspects. Much has already been done in India for the education uh, of the nearly uh, 10 million Indian primary and secondary uh, school teachers. Um, but uh, like in all other countries where we are present, uh, it's important to see how we can do better. So we wanted to take a, a comprehensive, constructive uh, look at the implementation of existing policies to address uh, teachers, teaching, and teacher education issues uh, in the country, highlighting uh, best practices and proposing a set of actionable recommendations. So. Uh, I think that uh, it's important uh, here to uh, showcase also that during the pandemic over the past two years, two years plus now, we have seen that schools have not been closed. Schools have not been closed. Only the school buildings have been closed. Everybody has continued to, to work. The teachers and the staff have been in fact working across the country tirelessly to ensure that learning never stopped. And uh, at UNESCO, and I know I will be joined by our colleagues at, at UNICEF later, we would like to laud and thank uh, all of the teachers for the crucial role that they have played in uh, nurturing the minds of children, adolescents, and, and youth. And for those of you who are teachers, this report is your uh, report. That's really another message that I wanted to to make at the beginning of my rather long introduction, but I want to stress a few important points from the beginning. And it's a report for all of the hardworking professionals that uh, you as teachers uh, are. And we really mean what we say in the title of the report when we say, no teacher, no class. Um, what uh, we have seen also is countering a, a common uh, myth the report highlights that uh, when it comes to technology, uh, teachers do not think that use of technology will have negative effects on students. Uh, we heard, for instance, during the pandemic that, oh, this is going to change students forever. It's going to make them lazy. Uh, and that's obviously not at all the case. And uh, we have uh, evidence of that. Um, a survey conveyed in the early days of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, also found that the teachers themselves are uh, very open to uh, ICT-enabled uh, teaching. But what we see in our report and based on our research, we also know that teachers are concerned about their own lack of uh, proficiency, as well as the lack of suitable resources and often poor infrastructure. It was felt by 50%, 57% of teachers that using technology was time-consuming. 65% of them felt that their own limited ability to integrate ICT into their subject teaching uh, posed uh, challenges. 
51% of teachers felt that having a dedicated computer for their own use is necessary and that often they did not have uh, such uh, access. So it's all a complicated situation. It's not black or white. And our report is not about doom and gloom. It's about providing you know, um, a picture of the contrasted view when it comes to teachers uh, in, uh, in, in India. And again, we really, really, really emphasize best practices and there are uh, many. That's uh, something that we have seen, uh, for instance, uh, uh, and here I want to mention the National Initiative for School Heads and Teachers Holistic Advancement, which goes by the acronym NISHTA. For those of you who maybe are not aware, uh, NISHTA offers teachers with uh, the training modules, uh, digital literacy, uh, preschool education, but also assessment, uh, uh, some courses, and, and uh, also uh, recommendations concerning uh, health and well-being. So uh, we have more information in our report on NISHTA, which I invite you to uh, discover. Um, so I, again, don't, I, I need to stop at this point in time because we would like to have a dynamic uh, presentation, but I needed to go into these elements early in, in our report. I really want to say, again, uh, that we have been very proud uh, to work with the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, uh, which is uh, recognized for its uh, excellence. Excellence, and we of course have with us today amongst us Professor Shalini Barat, the director of the Tata Institute of Social Sciences. Thank you very much for uh, joining us and uh, organizing this event uh, here in uh, Mumbai. I would like at this point to, uh, if you could please uh, uh, briefly share your, your thoughts on uh, the important role uh, that uh, education, uh, uh, educational institutions like this uh, play in the uh, educational sector and. Uh, why you accepted to be uh, uh, joining forces with UNESCO. Uh, thank you, uh, Eric, for uh, a wonderful opening to this uh, event, to this meeting. And I'd like to welcome you and your colleagues from the UNESCO. Uh, I'd like to also uh, welcome Professor Sarankwani and uh, all colleagues from the CET, uh, students who are also from the center and maybe from other schools. Uh, I'd also like to welcome all the teachers. This report is about teachers, right? And I'm so happy that this is the first few events that we are doing uh, in, uh, you know, um, offline mode uh, and uh, being able to meet all of you in person is really a, uh, a joy, actually, you know, to see uh, people in person. Uh, so I'm very happy about this. Uh, and um, as uh, you said, Eric, uh, this report really puts uh, teachers in the center. And in the COVID situation, we have seen that uh, teachers are the COVID warriors also. Because, you know, the kind of uh, immense pressure they had and also to continue with education of children, of students across uh, all levels was no mean us. And uh, we have recognized uh, teachers as among those who have given their time and their effort, their energy in uh, challenge of the uh, COVID pandemic. So really it's very important and it's, it's, it's interesting that we actually have a report of this kind to you know, launch uh, in just as we are hopefully seeing the end of the COVID pandemic. Um, the Institute, uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, uh, uh, a community engaged university as we like to call it, is uh, uh, Institute of National Importance and uh, what we have been seeing is that over the last several decades education uh, field, uh, engagement with the education field has grown uh, in, in many, many ways. Uh, actually our engagement with uh, the field of education dates back to somewhere I would say uh, mid 60s or late 60s uh, when the then director uh, Professor uh, M.S. Gore was invited by the National Commission on Education to do a, so interna uh, to do a national uh, sociological conference uh, and look at the state of uh, education and he looked at uh, and he was I think that was a very big conference uh, that he uh, organized in Tata Institute of Social Sciences which actually put the TIS on the map of education uh, in the country. 
uh, that report, uh, that particular conference was not just uh, important about, you know, that s several uh, sociologists and several noted personalities came here and met, but it actually had some very, very, uh, you know, uh, important, uh, uh, you know, outputs, I should say. Uh, one was in the form of uh, a report that I, rem I don't remember the, exactly the title, uh, but it, it uh, made a lot of... Uh, uh, difference to the way uh, the institute itself was perceived uh, as a you know institute where very serious credible research was being done and secondly as I said you know it gave a lot of importance to uh, how education should be looked into uh, and then uh, it also gave us an opportunity to create a research unit on the sociology of education which continues to this day and it's a very unique uh, kind of a center that we have actually it's not there anywhere in the uh, country. Uh, the other thing which happened as a result of that is a very important eight set of, you know, very important field studies in education, uh, which also were published uh, and then uh, brought home the fact that, you know, social science is uh, not just about theory and not just about, you know, uh, doing research of a certain kind. It must be ap applicable. It must have applied value. And that's how we have been always in the last several decades. Uh, so uh, we've had a very, very strong association with education field. And then, of course, we also have a school of education here in this campus. We have a school of education in the Hyderabad campus. And then came the Center of, edu ex Center of Excellence in Teacher Education. And I was, uh, was very, very happy and uh, completely determined that, yes, this center must come. Because uh, to me, uh, investing in teachers like, is like investing in the future. It's not only just about, you know, students, yes, they will, uh, you know, be the future citizens of the country, they are going to, you know, shape the country, but uh, what are students without teachers? And what are teachers, you know, if there is, there is not quality teachers? And therefore, um, I'm completely uh, clear that, you know, the teacher education or the teacher focus on teachers is very, very critical for us. And in this particular uh, year of the COVID, we also found that how teachers can be innovative, how teachers can, you know, uh, remain dedicated to, uh, you know, teaching, uh, and what they can do with technology on their side. And they uh, probably did a lot of uh, work uh, in the Center of Education, uh, Excellence in edu Teacher Education. We have had, uh, you know, our colleagues have been leveraging technology for uh, teaching of science, uh, mathematics, education. Uh, and in this particular COVID time, uh, they actually produced some uh, uh, wonderful, you know, resources which were made freely available to teachers, uh, given that, you know, this was uh, happening uh, online, uh, which they also have a very smart uh, abbreviation, COOL. It's really cool. Um, open, this connected open online learning, COOL, that continues to be freely available also on the TISEX uh, platform. Uh, and also that they brought out several, you know, important publications, which I'm not going to go through, but uh, in fact, a lot of these publications recently are also in COVID-19 uh, pandemic and, uh, you know, assessment of this. Uh, but since we, we are now in this particular meeting where we are talking with, about this report, the UNESCO report, I'm, I'm very pleased to say and very, feel very proud that in the last three years we have had Every year we have had a UNESCO report, uh, which means that it's quite an achievement, actually. Uh, so we have uh, the first, uh, uh, the 2019 st uh, uh, State of the Art, uh, State of the Education Report for India and for NOS, uh, then the Vocational Education first, again in 2020, and today we have this uh, in 2021, no teacher, no class. And I'm very happy that we are having the Marathi translation of this report. Uh, which means that, you know, we are really being very inclusive and don't want, uh, you know, uh, teachers and others who are interested in this field to not understand what really is this report is all about. Uh, I'm not going to go into the, uh, you know, the various uh, findings. I think Eric has already uh, highlighted some key findings uh, and he's also talked about, you know, that the whole report is very constructive in its approach. It's all about, you know, what more we can do and what more needs to be done and how teachers and teaching and teaching community and the environment, the ecosystem has to be leveraged in such a way that, 
you know, they do their best, but we also support teaching and teachers. And we all as teachers know that, you know, there's so much that can be done, but we also need an ecosystem. I'd like to only just flag one uh, particular, uh, you know, um, finding from here. This, it says that, you know, uh, improved pathways for career advancement and professional growth, including communities of practice to enable peer mentoring. I think uh, some of these things are very important because people talk about, you know, giving them better salaries and, you know, uh, the infrastructure and so on. But I think something has to be done to create an environment and a peer, peer, peer learning, etc. Um, of course, you will see the rest of it in the report, uh, but I think I'll encourage our colleagues and all others who are present here to do more research and we need much more data. And uh, data really should drive our policies and when we come with evidence, uh, I think policy makers and programmers sit back and listen. Uh, so it's not all about just, you know, uh, armchair thinking, there's hardcore data and I'm very happy about having this report in my hand and NEP 2020 allows us to do many things for teachers and I hope uh, this report will be used for doing uh, the kind of support system, to create the kind of support system uh, NEP 2020 also requires it to move forward. Uh, thank you very much for your patient hearing and thank you Eric for giving me an opportunity to share a few ideas. Thank you, thank you very much uh, Professor Shalini and I'm sure our collaboration will continue for many years to, uh, to come. So uh, what we have tried to do with our report is to look on existing and new research on uh, the subject at both uh, national and global levels. And we've had a lot of consultations also with key stakeholders, including uh, a number of uh, experts, uh, institutions, civil society, organizations, and much more. But let me give the floor immediately to, to uh, Dr. Pa uh, Padma Sangapani, chairperson of the Center of uh, Excellence in uh, teacher education at TIS, the lead uh, author of this year's State of the Education Report for India. She worked with a large team, many of whom are, are here, and I would like to ask you to explain, uh, on behalf of the whole team, the complexity of preparing this report. Please. Thank you, Erika. Before I start, I just want to acknowledge uh, colleagues from Chhattisgarh, Samagra Shiksha, Sudesh Ji, uh, welcome. We've been collaborators for many years, and I hope that this report will speak to the work that you are doing in the state. Uh, I also want to acknowledge colleagues from Cap Gemini who are enabling us to work with BMC teachers, and to especially welcome members from the BMC uh, to this meeting. We're really very pleased that collaborators with whom we have worked on improving quality or professional development for teachers, supporting teachers to integrate technology meaningfully into their classroom practice, are here with us today. Uh, this, uh, the preparation of this report has been really a very educated uh, process for us. Although we as researchers know the importance of communicating uh, our work to the wider public and making it relevant in, in uh, the wider discourse, we rarely accomplish it with as much elan and focus as you have taught us to do, Eric. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to actually invite my colleagues, Ruchi and Anusha, to share with you some of the key uh, experiences we had working to prepare this report through COVID period, and also to share some findings especially relevant to the state of Maharashtra where we are launching this report. So please. So I'll start with what the report itself has, and then Ruchi will go on to talk about what went into the findings that we came up with. Um, as both Eric and Professor Bharat have already shared, there have been a lot of insights and we do have uh, the fact that we need increased recruitment across the country, we need then to have more of leveraging of technology and be able to also include pedagogies which are inclusive in nature. Uh, we need also to understand that teachers need better conditions, working conditions and salaries across both the private and public schools in, across the country. Uh, but this is in terms of also this general insights for the whole country uh, report in a sense. We do find that teachers have worked selflessly, as Professor Bharat said, uh, as frontline workers, and they have continued to enable us to overcome the effects. What is it that 
with specific with respect to Maharashtra, since this is in relation to the Maharashtra release, is that overall we find Maharashtra is much better at provisioning for teachers than the national average. We find that teachers are generally having better working conditions. Uh, we do find that there are just about 3% in a sense, uh, single teacher schools which has been widely reported, but there are just 3% of schools in Maharashtra which are single teacher schools, but 91% of them are in rural areas. So we do need to identify and find better ways of looking through those. Uh, 14% schools have vacancies, not, it's not a high number compared to the national average. We do find, uh, as pointed out, the teachers' working conditions to be better, but, um, and 60% of the schools have access to ICT. That's a great achievement. We also look at the fact that Maharashtra has also, in a way, uh, provisioned very well for teachers to have career advance pathways. So they can, uh, through application, go on to become block resource persons and cluster resource persons. Uh, they, we do have a high uh, percentage of highly qualified teachers, well qualified teachers. We still don't have enough adequate data when it comes to arts, music, physical education teachers. We do need to research more and we will find ways of accomplishing that in the future. But uh, over to Ruchi to identify what were the challenges. So let me talk about the process that we went through in generating this report itself. So we started working on this report in around February uh, 2021 and then uh, we landed straight into the Delta wave of COVID pandemic and that itself led to a lot of constraints. The constraints of uh, our own team not being able to meet uh, physically, uh, the uh, people whom we wanted to uh, ask data for, they were finding it difficult to respond in time. But we are very, very grateful to them to having, uh, uh, to have given us the time as well as access to the data despite all the stresses of pandemic that they were facing. And we have been able to produce this report. So the core of the analysis in this, uh, of this report has been done from uh, drawing uh, publicly available data from UDICE as well as periodic labor survey. Which is, uh, and uh, we also involved in a desk analysis study of more than 300 uh, documents which included research reports, uh, government policy documents and uh, also analyzed some of the uh, government websites. We also have a small bit of uh, primary analysis of uh, CTET question papers, teacher eligibility test question papers, as well as uh, interview of teacher educators for, uh, because we felt that it is important to include their perspectives also. We, I must say that we have greatly benefited uh, of uh, having interaction with the advisory board and editorial board members which UNESCO had set up for us and uh, uh, the interaction with them had greatly benefited us in Thank shaping you. the report itself. Thank you very much. So, uh, as mentioned, there's a lot of peer review that goes into the, uh, the report. Uh, and uh, in that regard, we have worked with uh, many uh, prominent individuals and uh, organizations. Uh, I want to mention that uh, uh, the Office of the Vice President of India was represented at the National Council on Educational Research and Training. Uh, we had our colleagues from the teaching division uh, in Paris also uh, involved. The National Council of Teacher Education, the National Institute of Educational Planning and uh, Administration, the National uh, Coalition for Education and uh, Education International, to name a few. And we also had, uh, as we always try to do, uh, to uh, make sure that uh, UN efforts are properly coordinated, our colleagues from uh, UNICEF in New Delhi. But today, we have uh, with us our colleagues from UNICEF in uh, Mumbai. And I would like to uh, give the floor uh, to Rajeshwari Chandrasekhar. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today. And um, I would ask you from a UN perspective, because we haven't really talked a lot about it yet, uh, could you please highlight the importance of Sustainable Development Goal 4 within the whole set of uh, SDGs? Uh, and uh, within it, maybe you can highlight also the importance of uh, uh, teachers. It's a great honor to be here, and thanks to uh, you, Eric, and uh, 
uh, Joyce from uh, UNESCO as also to the TIS team under your leadership, Professor Bharat, to invite me here. I think uh, the SDG 4 for me and for us in UNICEF, and you would agree, is very fundamental to all other SDGs. If you have to achieve other SDGs, I think you have to start with this. Why? Because unless a child is well educated, is you know better aware of his or her environment, is able to make decisions that impact his or her life, then becomes a productive citizen, adds to the GDP, and then goes on to influence the other goals, which is health, well-being, and a better planet, which is peaceful. So I think in, if you look at it that way in a very logical way, the SDG 4, which is for inclusive and equitable uh, quality education for all, is very crucial, therefore. But when I talk here of education, of course, I go beyond what is taught in schools, and I think an important element is on the life, life skills education, which has become so essential for every child's growing up years, because that's what determines what he or she will become when he, when he or she becomes an adult. You know, the, the ability to learn, to discern, to make a decision that is in the best interest of the society and for the child, I think can only come with life skills. And therefore, for me, this whole issue of SDG 4 is not just about what is taught in schools, which is the curriculum alone, but also the element of life skills education, which is so very important. And now coming to the issue of teachers, I think teachers are those who have the greatest impact on the child amongst, of course, many other influences. There are the parents, the communities, the friends, the peers, but I think teachers are the closest to the child. And if you just go back to what has happened in the pandemic, which was just discussed by the earlier speakers, the role of the teachers has become even more stark, how important their role has been in bringing back a sense of normalcy in an otherwise abnormal situation, if I may to use that adjective, abnormal, because there were no schools, but yes, learning was going on like Eric said. Why? It was really because of the innovative nature of teachers who decided to find some out of the way thinking, out of the box thinking, to ensure that not only education continues, but also the children who are part of their, uh, let's say, his or her radius of activity, do not go home to bed with a hungry stomach. They even ensure that those children have some food to eat. This goes beyond the normal duty of call of every teacher. And I'm speaking not just of this state, I believe it is across the country. It's a matter of degree, but yes, every teacher took on a lot of extra role that was normally not envisaged apart from teaching within the precincts of the classroom. They have, in many cases, actually walked on their own for miles just to go and check on the security and the safety of their children at home. In fact, as Eric said, many teachers have imbibed new technology so that they could reach out to the children through the mobile classes and the mobile phones to teach on the lessons. So there have been a lot that they have done which is very new for them and therefore they are fit to be called COVID warriors as well. And in the, in the era of, of COVID vaccination, they've even taken on the role, I would say, of ensuring that the education community of stakeholders get vaccination at the right time, of the right dosage as well. So for me, I think this launch of the report of UNESCO is like a celebration of the teacher's work that has happened during this period. And for the teachers here who are part of this meeting, and for those who could not be part of this meeting, I think it is really a celebration of their countless efforts of making the continuity of learning so crucial. I want to also take, uh, give some examples of what happened when UNICEF in 2016-17 conducted a study with teachers just to find out what is it that they wanted to do to become better teachers. And from that was born this concept of a clustered teachers academic leadership program. <coughs> It is this cluster leaders, these teachers, who actually help do the learning from home packages during the pandemic. It is the same group of teachers who have helped observe classroom practices, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> observe classroom practices and ensure that through mentorship the teaching practices improve. They've also improved each other's professional associations. And this is what the UNESCO report is also recommending. So clearly for me, there is a lot of coordination and one voice that is coming through that the teacher is the fulcrum 
for achieving <coughs> SDG 4. School can be there, but what is a building without a teacher? So I think that's the big link. Going further in the pandemic, I would like to talk of two other initiatives. One, where schools were of course closed, but the teachers introduced what is called Ghost Teacher Shaniwar, which means through a radio program, they announced through the loudspeakers in the mosques and in the temples to read out storybooks so that kids who did not have access to mobile phones in their home could hear from the loudspeakers and get to hear the story. Now this initiative itself has reached 2.5 million children in this one state. So this just goes to show that teachers have done probably beyond what was their call of duty, but teachers, this also goes to show that if you give them the right space and the right tools <coughs> and get them to be independent thinkers, they can actually transform the education scenario. And that's a key lesson learned that the pandemic has taught us and that your report is also highlighting. So I would really like to thank UNESCO for bringing out this report, which is very timely. <coughs> and content-wise, we are completely in support of what is the focus of this report. Thank you so We're much. We're now going to go into some of the recommendations of the report. The full report is available uh, online in a PDF <coughs> format if you want to go through uh, all of it. As you have seen, and I will mention it, it includes a lot of only, it includes only original photographs relating to teachers uh, throughout India. These photographs are free of rights. So feel free to use them if you uh, uh, would like. Just give uh, proper credit to, uh, uh, to UNESCO. But let's look into the recommendations. Uh, we hope that they will be uh, useful for all uh, stakeholders. And I think we're going to start showing them uh, on, uh, on the screen. Um, and the um, first uh, recommendation, we, we did mention it already uh, a lot, is that uh, uh, teachers should be considered uh, and recognized because is specifically because specifically of the COVID-19 crisis as frontline workers. And for that, uh, I would like to ask uh, Joyce Cohn, who is our Chief of Education uh, for uh, UNESCO in uh, New Delhi, uh, to uh, talk specifically about the importance uh, of this, can we have the mic, for Joyce, please? Uh, the importance of this specific uh, recommendation, and I trust... Uh, Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for coming, and of course, first and foremost, thank you to Professor Bharat, Thank you to Professor Padma for hosting this event at TIS. Uh, we're very, very lucky to have such excellent partnership with you on this report and on many other projects to come. And so um, already as stated, the numbers of teachers that work in India, some 9.7 million teachers across 1.5 primary and secondary schools in India this is large. This just goes to show the, um, the, the volume uh, of the teaching workforce in the country. And so while these numbers show the huge challenges of preparing and tra training teachers at scale, at the same time it also shows the possibility of providing quality learning to children across the country if we're going to really manage and fulfill the needs of teachers in India. India, as we all know, has certainly continued its commendable efforts to improve the education system with the uh, launch of the national education uh, policy. And this NEP underscores the key role of teachers with the release um, uh, of these policies. Um, the policy takes a systems approach to teaching quality, but to implement such policies, it, we need teachers' role to be highlighted in reaching those goals. In addition to existing challenges faced by teachers, dealing with the global pandemic wasn't, as we all know, was not easy for any teacher and we've heard many, many stories of their self-sacrifice and their dedication to go beyond <coughs> what is requested of them. And as Rajeshwari has just mentioned, it's almost selfless that they are, as Dr. Uh, uh, Sharat has said, Bharat has said, um, COVID warriors, so to speak. So once again, UNESCO would like to applaud all the teachers for their dedication and uh, often self-sacrifice for children over the past years and especially the past two years. As we all know, um, teachers are more than just teachers. They, do, they take on more activities, more um, work than just, their job involves more than actual teaching. 
In the Indian context, they're in charge of leading classes, conducting examinations, evaluating exam papers, but also distributing midday relief uh, food and lunches, school textbooks, and stationary items. They're often called to carry out several, several volunteering functions like community awareness and responsibilities during elections. These responsibilities were further increased because of COVID, and one such example was to assist in conducting door-to-door -door surveys in supporting the vaccination drives. And as a result, many teachers themselves experienced mental and emotional stress uh, with concerns for personal and family well-being balancing with work responsibilities. So as Eric mentioned, one of the recommendations in the State of the Education Report is to call for the immediate need to recognize teachers as frontline workers in addressing the physical and mental health of teachers. We encourage all stakeholders to refer to this report as it contains in-depth analysis of the current state of teachers in India and by highlighting best practices, it also serves as a reference tool to enhance the implementation of the NEP. So I would like to conclude to just by saying that we really have to realize that teachers have the maximum potential to, to give impact um, uh, in, in schools across the globe. They are the fulcrum for learning and they create the impact that they create helps to develop a whole new generation now and for the future and it's vital that we continue to extend our effort to teachers and acknowledge their efforts. The report itself, you will much. see all of the recommendations one by one. We don't have the time uh, here to go through uh, all of them. Uh, recommendation two, uh, just to uh, read it to you, is to increase the number of teachers and improve working conditions in northeastern states rural areas and aspirational districts. So there's a whole range of research and uh, more background documentation on uh, this particular uh, issue. We also have a recommendation which states specifically uh, uh, that we should improve the terms of employment of teachers in both public and private schools. And there again, there's a lot of specific information on uh, this uh, aspect. We've also uh, prepared a number of videos that go with some of the recommendations, and now we're going to spend a couple of minutes looking at uh, recommendation four, which brings attention to the need of <laughs> increasing the number of physical education, music, art, vocational education, early childhood, and special education teachers, so specialized teachers. By engaging in activities like painting, dancing, practicing yoga, playing a sport, learning music, students have the opportunity to look beyond textbooks and identify their unique interests and passions. In order to enhance creativity, critical and analytical thinking among students, the effective deployment of teachers specialized in these subjects is very much needed. Research from across the globe has highlighted, for instance, that art exercises can help in improving students' handwriting and offer emotional growth. Music, yoga or other physical activity also have the ability to create a positive mind and can improve the concentration of a child. Exceptional groups of learners like children with special needs require focused attention outside of a regular learning setup. There is a need for more teachers in early childhood education and special education to prepare children for formal learning. Moreover, extracurricular activities like carpentry, embroidery can act as potential areas to spur vocations. State support is key to develop effective teacher education programs in these curriculum areas. The other important stakeholders like social workers and counsellors also play a pivotal role in developing localized responses and building greater resilience in the education system. So again, we've developed a number of videos and uh, if there are members of the, of the media who are interested, we have a lot of B-roll also that is available uh, that you can use uh, free of rights to discuss and report on, on the report. Uh, recommendation five uh, in the report is to value the professional autonomy of teachers. Uh, and uh, here, I would like to uh, invite 
one teacher to uh, join us uh, for uh, this uh, particular presentation, Mr. Rajan Doke, school teacher from one of the Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation Schools. Uh, and uh, if you can please uh, uh, tell us about your role as a teacher. Teachers of BMC, which is I have working from last uh, 32 years. This pandemic in pandemic, I have also done the duty of 45 days. And I know that all children are suppressed. Just I give them only just see. Children, don't fear. See, you actually lost one and a half year. They are wandering here and there, and actually they are pressure, under pressure. But that time, Deltas, all persons come to our school and suggested about that program, project. First time I say, project is not a project. And we say project is not completed. But when I see the practice and uh, such a game, good techniques to the children and that my lucky class was first class and uh, I am proud to say you the one girl is there she is also now earning 800 rupees by using computer so that is a great achievement so I am proudly saying Delta has given to my children, good things. Uh, I have uh, also, I was calling uh, her, but I am not called because she is alone. She is not ready to come here, little girl. So, at a grassroots we are doing. So, many problems are suffering. The children are suffering many problems. So, we know that. So I have asked to the children, oh, you have not completed this, you know, sir, there is no light, what can I do? I know that. So our children, means PNC children, are doing too much hard work, painstaking work, hard work. And I am also proud of them, uh, because I am teacher of them and that is why teacher is only half inch heighted of the children. Then the teacher is smart, no, he is intelligent. But every intelligent teacher does not teach the child good. So I last 32 years contacted with them and I am proud of you. Uh, but uh, my suggestion is to Delta also. Delta the program or syllabus should be included in our timetable. If uh, education officers and other our officers will be there, uh, it should be included and one or two periods will be taken to our school. I am openly inviting Delta. Next year, uh, I have given this report and submitted report. So please come to my school and teach all educational technology to my poor people, poor people. They are very pure. Okay? Thank you very much. And I am proud of you for coming. Uh, recommendation okay, six, you. as you will discover, is to build teachers' career pathways. That was one of the frequently heard uh, complaints that we heard from teachers when we uh, uh, spoke to them. Recommendation seven was to uh, restructure pre-service, professional development, and strengthen curricular and pedagogical reform. Recommendation eight was to support community of practice. I, I think that's a little bit what you were talking about uh, earlier. As for recommendation nine, let's look at it on the screen. The use of information and communication technology in the education sector has become a lot more widespread in the past decade. With the advancements in technology, the teaching formats in schools have changed and they have allowed teachers to make teaching and learning more fun. 
a teacher's ability to adapt and integrate technology can help boost learning among learners. Familiarity with online teaching methods is crucial since knowledge and understanding of such methods can help to reach the remotest locations of the country. The high internet penetration and low cost of internet in India provide a great opportunity to provide quality education where access remains a hindrance for many children. This is particularly the case in rural areas. The COVID-19 pandemic has further proven that the education system need to be on their toes and have to adapt to the changing times. As the UNESCO 2021 State of the Education Report for India highlights, in such testing times, schools and teachers use different forms of teaching methods, including Zoom meetings, Microsoft Teams and WhatsApp, among others. Recognizing the importance of technology in the education sector and how it can positively impact the learning of students, it is vital to see ICT as a necessary competence among teachers. It is crucial to make it a key area of the professional training curriculum in the coming years. About ICT and ICT training and, and so on, that will be included in the report. And by the way, you recognize uh, our program coordinator from ESCO Nudari, uh, Abhinav Kumar, who appears and narrates this uh, particular uh, video. Uh, recommendation uh, 10, as you will discover, is to develop teaching governance through consultative processes based on mutual accountability. Uh, we try to weigh every single word in, these, uh, in the short form of these recommendations. Obviously, there's a lot more that is contained uh, in, uh, in the report uh, itself. So I think uh, we're coming now close to the, to the end of our, of our presentation today, but we started with the teachers. So we also wanted to show you, according to some students' voices, what, in their view, makes a good teacher. Clarity of thought and patience. Encourage me to be creative. For me, a teacher is compassionate and awe-inspiring, who inspires me to look beyond the textbooks in the real world. Empathy in a teacher is very important. Because they should be able to relate to the students and their daily life issues. Passionate and motivated. I think teachers are just like second parents because they help us to learn a lot. Nice and kind. Communication skill and knowledge of the subject they are teaching. Along with empathy, another quality is compassion. A few compassion voices to is very important to help the students in sure whatever problems uh, they face. And that's what so the time has come to uh, unveil uh, here in Maharashtra the, the report uh, itself. And I will ask uh, uh, our team to uh, distribute uh, the Marathi version of the report's summary that we're making available. I think we have enough uh, uh, copies for, for everyone. Again, if you want to refer to the full report in English, go on the UNESCO website, or we can, I'm sure it's also available on the TIS website uh, as well, uh, and you can read it in its uh, entirety. Uh, again, uh, this report was uh, made possible thanks to the research team at the uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences under the uh, very able guidance of Professor Fatma Sarangapani and I want to thank you uh, again for uh, working with us on this uh, report. So please go through it, discover it in much greater detail. I only hope that it will uh, inspire all stakeholders and that it will inspire you also. I'm sure you can organize uh, group discussions on one specific uh, recommendation. If you do uh, one a day for an hour, that's 10 hours of work. Just a, a suggestion uh, here. And uh, I'm sure there will be very good uh, um, exchanges uh, on this issue at the level of the students or aspiring uh, teachers. So with that, I think we, we need a little picture with uh, our friends at uh, TIS. So if you can join me uh, with the report uh, itself. Do you have one up Thank you. Okay, do you have your colleagues? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much to everybody for coming today.